next, let's talk about the best 2021 releases. I'm already sharing my screen. So if you guys don't mind, let me go first. And then if we could do P, because I'm sharing his screen for the ones that he picked. And then Jason, you could go last and we could you could share your screen. Sounds so the, the first one that I picked, uh, let me close out of these. The first one that I picked, very fitting, let us keep it in the Ooh. Tudor family, is going to be the Tudor Black Bay 58 bronze. So uh, $4,525 for a full bronze watch, explorer style uh, dial with the three, the six, the nine uh new on the fly adjustment for the class which i really hope they introduce on other black made models because that definitely is one of the gripes about my 58 that it doesn't have on the fly adjustment um i i really i wouldn't buy this for myself but i could appreciate what uh what tutor did you know I, I'm, I'm always very uh very curious what tutor releases just because they they here you can see the on the fly adjustment I, I love what they do as opposed to rolex where they're like really scared and very tactical as to how they do things um uh tutor just kind of comes out swinging and says you know we're, we're, we're just going to do this and this is what we want to do so we saw the silver right i would have picked the silver but the fact that they didn't include a silver bracelet i was like you know what i i'd rather pick the bronze just because they gave us they went all out and i think for the price point it's uh it, it's a winner and it's not a limited edition it's just a boutique uh exclusive so um yeah that's my first one second one on my list would have to be this guy this is the omega snoopy hey. this is uh the silver right the omega speedmaster silver snoopy award this is for their 50th anniversary what a stunning watch i mean snoopy being uh uh, near and dear to NASA with with their, their awards and everything. And this is the third release from Omega. This is such a beautiful watch. Uh, you could see Snoopy on the dial, right? And jumping for joy. One of the cool things that I think uh, kind of surprised a lot of people was the case back. When you activate the chronograph, the little spaceship goes from one side of the moon to the other side of the moon. Um, and I believe uh, don't quote me on this, but I believe it takes 14 seconds for him to go across. Uh, but yeah, I, I, if I could get my hands on this and actually have it in my collection, it will be beautiful. It's $9,600, but impossible mm. to get. I mean, they're all pretty much allocated for years. I obviously try to go to the Omega store and get one and I couldn't. So yeah, it's, uh, it's one of those, one of those things, uh, that, I, I think it's beautiful. Not my favorite out of the Snoopies. I would have to say the second release was my favorite. The all white Snoopy uh, release. That was super cool. Last one for me is uh, this guy, the MBNF Legacy Perpetual Evil. So we saw the the introduction of this guy for a new color and case material. It's now titanium with a green dial. Of course, almost impossible to get because... MBNF is super hot right now. It's one of those independents that everybody wants. And furthermore, uh, the price point on this is almost $200,000. We're talking $176,000. And it's a, a limited, uh, not limited edition, but limited production to 20 pieces a year because of what it is, right? Uh, but the water resistance on this, 80 meters, 44 uh, millimeters. Thickness is a thick boy. It's 17.5 millimeters. But I think a lot of it has to do with that crazy dome. Uh, and I, I, I think, you know, we, we had a guest on when he was talking about the next big thing. So we talked about uh, FP Jorn and MBNF is definitely going to be one of those next uh, watches or watch brands to just blow up. We've seen it. And I think this is just insane. I mean, this is this watch is just crazy. Um, so those are my picks. What do you guys think? Nice. That was nice. very, very pretty. Nice stuff. Yeah, I'm feeling that one. All right, let's sure. go. Let's go around P out of the three that I said. Which one's the one that 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 uh, that's your favorite? Probably the Tudor. The Tudor. All right. Yeah, probably the Tudor. Jason. Hmm. <laughs> You're like uh, that MBNF yeah. is looking real good right now. Yeah, that MBNF is. I mean, it's just so co the complication, man. And then like, crazy. you know, it's something you. I, I got. I mean, obviously, it's expensive and everything, rightly so, but. I feel like if you walk in the room with that, that's going to trump pretty much. And it's not always about oh, that, but sure. sometimes it is. You know what I mean? Like you're like, oh, look at this thing. You know, it's really cool. Right. And it's super involved. And uh, yeah, it's just, and if you get a chance to sit there and think about how it operates and learn how it works and, and what it's doing, you have a real piece of uh, 
you have an engineering marble on your wrist. Oh no, absolutely. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. Uh, the the movement is com- uh, comprised of forty one joules, five hundred and eighty one components. That's crazy. I'm sure it's inexpensive to service. Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> I could I tried to say it with a, with a straight face, and I couldn't. <laughs> Oh yeah. man, that's so funny. All right, Pete, let's get into your into your things. What do you yeah. want to what do you want to talk about first? Oh, uh, let's talk about the bright one first. The bright one. Okay, cool. Oh man. Look, look, look at that blue dial. Oh my God. Yo, this is celebrating the golden era of commercial aviation. This Navi timer B01 Chronograph 43 pays a tri- special tribute to American Airlines and is limited to a hundred pieces. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It is COSC certified. Uh, man, this thing is beautiful. Self winding mechanical, uh, high reserve, 70 hours. Vibrations, you know what I'm saying? 28,847 joules. Uh, dial at the counter is a dial aperture. Case of stainless steel, screw in sapphire crystal. Uh, three bars, water resistance, but you know. It's for the air and ain't for the sea. Um, yeah. Bezel is bi-directional. Um, the crown is non-screw lock, but it has two gaskets. Uh, crystal, again, is sapphire glare proof on both sides. Hmm. So this thing is awesome. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. I, you can't I, tell I, me that that blue don't mess well with that red. Usually, I don't do blue and red. But when I saw this, I said, yeah. I can do this. Can this do is this. the only gripe I have right here. The case yeah. back. That, really? I mean, American Airlines. Look at look at the the, the movement. Right. It, it it would look really cool, and then they just like slap it like right there, like super big. If, if they were gonna do that, I think they would have done the the Tudor the 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 new uh, Marine National approach, where they close the case back and they just engrave this. But that's just my opinion. I mean, I don't know. How do you, am I, I wrong? I love it. I love it. Yeah, you're wrong. For sure. Perfect. <laughs> Jason, am I great. wrong? How do you feel about this? Uh, I mean, I, I think they maybe could have went a little smaller so you could see. I, I do. Movement. I think it's, yeah, I mean, it's a symmetrical logo, right? And, it, and it's cool because it is it is honoring American Airlines. At least they didn't slap it on the front like Domino's. See, that's my issue is like those Domino's Rolexes, right? Like, I right. think it's different if you're, and then maybe I'm just being picky because I was in the military, but if you're honoring or it's a military watch, then I think that's different if that's on front, right? It's not Okay. so much a commercialization mm-hmm. but you know if you're a watch enthusiast you already know that this is a pilot's watch right this is for flying so when they say it's released by american airlines i think it's it goes back to the atm machine thing right like we know that the m and atm stands for machine we know that this is a pilot's watch we know it's for american airlines the color scheme when you look at the dial you know it's yeah. american airlines mm-hmm. and then if it if you are marketing it towards watch collecting people then you know a lot of us like to see the movement right especially if it's a really cool movement and a higher end movement so maybe they could have just went a little bit smaller because it looks like there's a circle back there underneath the eagle's wings so maybe they could have like shrunk it down a little bit and you'd still get the cool american airlines but then you get to see i don't know the rest of the movement or something or maybe yeah. put it lower like in the on the six o'clock to where it just hides part of the rotor but you could just see some of the rotor i don't know i'm not yeah. a design major though so what would i know yeah well from, i can go from- for it being smaller from my perspective, it just looks weird. It looks odd, especially with it being blue. I mean, I get it. That's the color scheme. I think if it would have been just like the outline in white or yeah. maybe just kind of like this color right here, kind of like silver, it would have looked a little better yeah. because to me, like you said, you know, this this kind of reminds me of the Rolex uh, Dominoes. But again, uh, the only way you were able to get the, Domi- the, the Rolex Domino's watch, if I remember correctly, you had to be a franchisee, right? You had to be an owner of Domino's and you had to sell X amount of dollars uh, for a period of a quarter or a year yeah. or something like that. And you would get the watch. You couldn't even buy it. I think you would get it, but that's, that's different, you know, because it's like, you want to have that prideful thing of having your Domino's yeah. pizza logo on the dial because you own a Domino's pizza. But anyway, beautiful looking watch. The only complaint for me is that logo on the back but uh they, they could have made that trans a little more translucent if you had made I think the logo wrong. like yeah. see-through you know just like very faint right. hints of that because i'm sure it's a proprietary blue for american airlines right so right of course of course just make it well, translucent mm-hmm. i think it would have been 
well, find I'll, that size. I'll tell you something. So a lot of people complain that Grand Seiko had that tiger or that uh, lion or whatever, not tiger, lion is a lion in the, in the back, right? And it was pretty much covering the, the movement. And now in all the newer releases, I, I think they kind of made away with it or they still keep it mm. on there, but it's very faintly there. You have to kind of move the watch around to actually see yeah. it. Um, so they, they, they could have done that. But I mean, overall, I think it's it's a handsome looking watch and pricing here. I'm looking at what? uh eight thousand oh, hundred and fifty yeah. in the leather and nine thousand yes, three fifty with the milliness bracelet it's, so, it's a little it's a little up there what do you guys know what the regular navi timer goes for everyone i've looked up is around 60 65 oh okay but if i'm being but if i'm being honest i mean i tend to just price check a lot on ebay so i haven't yeah. went and looked up a brand new one sure all right p second one uh time makes more on the california dial Okay, cool. You know, I, I just, I, I, something about Timex that I love so much, and I don't feel like mm -hmm. Timex get the respect they deserve. They killed it this year. They killed yeah. it this year. You know what I'm saying? For but sure. with the California Dow, you got a uh, case with the 34 millimeter stainless steel. Um, this comes in several different colors, like a black Dow and a white Dow. Um, even like one with the indices, I believe, comes like with silver indices. And this one here with the rose gold indices, um, stainless steel. The finishing is polished. Um, the crystal is acrylic. Uh, the watch movie is a mechanical hand wind movement with 30 meters of water resistance. Um, stainless steel. I just think this thing is beautiful. Yeah. Um, and, and, I mean, and people just totally sleeping on time. And then it's $199. Great price point for this watch, I think. Great yeah, there. no, for sure, for sure. Yeah, that's that's cool. I, I think that's a yes, that's sir. a great pick. What what uh movement they give us like a Miyota movement? I think that they're very notorious for for working. Yeah, on, uh, I mean uh, putting uh Miyota movements in their in their watches. Right. Um, I forget the history of the Cali dial, but it was uh it had to do with somebody servicing Rolexes, and I think he was doing something with the dials here in California, and it mm -hmm. was something like that. It was I heard uh, Jack Forrester from Hodinky one time break it down, but it was interesting to see. I've always been against Cali dials; I just thought it was kind of weird. But the watch that started me kind of warm warming me up to the idea was the Nomos. Um, uh, I think is their club campus is uh, the one that has the, the California dial. And I think they ex Timex executed this very well. Timex yeah. is definitely moving in the direction of the enthusiasts. They, I think they have uh, ways to go. If I'm being honest, uh, for instance, I know they have a lot of money behind them. And one of the things that they can start doing is perhaps either a putting better movements in their watches or B maybe perhaps start developing their own in-house movement. Cause they got the money. Uh, I think if they did that, they would be in a completely different uh, level. Um, or what do you guys think? What, what can they do different for people to start actually taking them serious? I think so. I think a lot of these companies do a poor job kind of explaining what their MO is. And, and I think as consumers, we're a lot more educated than most of us, especially if you're a watch collector, right? Or a watch hobbyist or enthusiast. Sure. So, you know, Timex's thing is to be like McDonald's, right? And every McDonald's is the same and you know what you're getting when you go there. Sure. There might be like right. a, like P lives in Cincinnati. There might be a Cincinnati hamburger that you don't have and, and right. you know, where I'm at in Virginia, but uh, you know what you're getting when you go to McDonald's. So with Timex, it's kind of like if, if what they're trying to do is appeal to the mass audience, then maybe you have like it separated inside your website or and whatever you have that shows these are, you know, these are just time pieces, right? You want to get one, you need one, you want to wear it. This is what it is. And then start to branch off and, and explain that these models that we're making are for the watch enthusiast, you know, and because sure. I think a lot of times it's the communication that falls apart. It's not what they're doing. They just don't tell anybody. Right. So if you're making this whole line of watches and specifically for watch enthusiasts and you're listening to them, tell, tell them, right. Cause I'm pretty sure there's tons of people that collect Timex that, Love it. They know the history of Timex. P loves Timex. I'm sure he knows some of the history. So if they were just to do a post or on social media, hey, we're releasing this blank line and we're giving the watch collectors or watch enthusiasts what they want. You know, you're going to have Sapphire Crystal upgraded movement, even if the movement upgrade was just a little bit, right? Say it goes from before it would say, sometimes, you know, you see the 
in the description in the specs, it says movement Miyota, but it doesn't tell you which one, you know? So maybe <laughs> right. you say, maybe you say it's the Miyota 9,000, like the entry level 9,000 series, which, you know, I know Mark at Long Island's raved about that movement sure. and a couple other people. Mm-hmm. And you just explain that. So then guys like P who really love Timex who are like, Oh, okay. And so now maybe this watch is 250 and not 199, but you as a consumer know, well, yeah, but I'm getting the Sapphire crystal. I'm getting a better movement. I'm getting maybe an increased water resistance or something as simple as like, oh, the lugs are all going to be 20 millimeters lug width on this model of watch. And I think that would go a long way to, I guess, increase the overall perspective of Timex's reputation. But then you got to ask who, who are they trying to push that reputation towards us, the watch right. collector? Or the general public. It, sure. Because we can sit around and have this discussion of all well, Timex, we don't think it's doing this. But if you asked a random person off the street, he or she might be like, Oh, I love my Timex. It's great. Because they don't sure. care about all the other stuff. They've bought this Timex for 150 bucks. They've had it for like five years. They've never had to think about anything when they wake up in the morning. They sure. just put it on, it's their watch. So um, I think it's a I think it's an attractive watch. Uh, w- as a newer watch enthusiast, what makes it a Cali? quote unquote Cali dial because I don't understand. Yeah. So the Cali dial refers to the Roman numerals on top and okay. the Arabic numerals on the bottom. Uh, there's there's history if you Google it. That's basically what it is. So any dial that you see like that. Um so the Apple Watch, the newer uh release, I forget what series it is, they actually introduced a Cali dial to their to oh nice their specification. So yeah, and Nomos is very notorious for using the the Cali dial. So that's what it refers to. I'm sorry. I, I, I just make an assumption that everybody knows no, no. different things, but uh I understand. Yeah, I mean it's something I, I didn't hear about till right. Right yeah. now, I never even heard the oh, term, I mean, so sure I'll look it up. People, I'm sure a lot of people listening, maybe watching, didn't even know what we we're talking about. So there you go. But P, third one, so we can move on to Jason. Yo, the uh, Aura 65. Cool. Aura, Diver 65. Okay. The Glow. The, the glow. glow. Okay. Um, yo, come on. The, the, the Dow speaks for itself, man, really. Like, that is hard. <laughs> that is hard. Uh, That's a nice price. Thing to watch. Price. 2000, right? Uh, 2000. Yeah. Yeah, that's up there. Um, case is 40 millimeters, uh, 12.8 millimeters in height, stainless steel, rotted water resistance, 100 millimeters. It has the Aorus 733 calibrate in it based on the Salida SW200 automatic, uh, power reserve, 38 hours, um, black strap is black leather. You can get a stainless steel bracelet. Um, like I said, it's two thousand, you know, but speaks for itself, man. How fly is that? Come on, it's a nice now. looking watch. Come on now, come on. I like the gradient on there. the dial. It's like a, it's like a inward to outward sunburst, or right. maybe that's just a reflection. But it's it's a little lighter in the middle, and it goes out, and it's darker sure. as it goes out. Yeah, I really like that a lot. Yeah. I just I the just noticed something. Track. You guys the noticed something? Track. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I agree what? with you. I was, rivets? I was gonna say, you guys know the, the rivets. I wonder if they're like full mm-hmm. rivets, like the Black Bay 58, because I know that's like a point of contingency for a lot of people, including myself. Right. It's a little funny here. I mean, I'm not going to lie, but I, I wonder how it wears. Uh, Why do people not like rivets? Because they're a pain to take out and adjust the sizing? Or no, is it no, just no, the no. visual so, they don't like? No. So here's the thing, Jason. So back in the days, uh, manufacturers put rivets because they actually genuinely did something right. They actually mm. held the, the, the bracelet yeah, yeah, yeah. in place. Unfortunately, like with the black Bay 58, uh, the, the Tudor black Bay 58, the rivets are fake. It's a full rivet. So it's not okay. real. It's just an aesthetic to give it a nod to its vintage past. Yeah. So that's what people have a, have a problem with, not with the aesthetic, but with the fact that it's non-functional and yeah, it's just yeah. a full, it's a, like a full Tina, you know, but yeah. with a rivet. So yeah. there you it's have like it. putting so, fake louvers on your car. Pretty much. So yeah, yeah. The, w- are these real? I highly doubt it. So I, I don't know if that would be a point of, of discussion for a lot of people or a turnoff for a lot of people. But for me, more is the the water resistance. I get that it's a skin diver, right? Because we're missing the crown guards right here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but 100 meters, I mean, at least on a diver, I like to see at least 150 or 200. But again, that's just me. What, what yeah. do you guys think? Yeah, well, I love this yeah. Watch. I mean, 100 <laughs> meters, like, that is it don't well, matter. Know. The high contrast between the gray and the green is designed to get the impression that the loom 
is glowing even in broad daylight. It does look yeah. like that. So you know what That's I mean? Cool. So very nice. Yeah, I'm loving it. I'm loving it's it. A, it's a handsome watch. All right, cool. Well, let's let's go around. I already stopped sharing my screen, but let's go around and and, and I guess Jason and me, we, we gotta pick what's uh what's the winner from Peace Collection. Mm. Me, for me is yeah. Oris. I, I think really it's like yeah, because I'm a diver watch. So the brightling for me is just that blue's a little too bright and that back yeah. just kind of it it just like I don't like it. Timex is cool. But again, in my mind, Timex is kind of inferior to the ones that he picked. So as yeah. a watch enthusiast, my money's going to go towards the Auris. I would, that Breitling for me is the one that, I mean, nice. if push came to show about to buy something, I, I I just look at it like if you already have a tool watch and you're wearing that thing Monday through Friday or whatever, right? That Breitling, like once Friday at like 1500 or sorry, 3 p.m., like you're getting off of work. Military you, hours. Yo, man, you go home, <laughs> you got this beautiful, you know, it's a warm day. It's you're out somewhere where it's sunny, you know, and that thing I bet plays in the light like oh yeah, like a rock star man. I mean, it's just yeah. and it's a fun watch, you know, because I tend to do more black and grays during the week and then more blues and stuff during the weekends. Oh, okay. Um, especially when the weather's nice because it's nice to see them in the sun and stuff. And that sounds yeah. kind of corny, but it definitely is a thing. So for me, the brightling. Okay, cool. Well, Jason, let's go into your releases. What, what do right. you have for us? Let's share the screen. Let's share the screen. So if you're listening, we, we're going to put this video up on YouTube so you could actually see what we are talking about. All right. Okay. So my first selection is the Fortis. And I hope mm. I say this right. Mm. Amadee 20. Okay. All right. So new release special edition. The name is the official Cosmonauts chronograph Amadee 20. And it uh, okay. talks about space. Now, the whole thing is kind of lined up behind, um, you know, going to Mars and stuff. So for mm-hmm. me, you know, it's built with titanium. I can go over the specs, but I'm pretty sure everyone's looked at the specs and, and, and I'll leave it here for a minute. So number one, you know, I never, I never really realized it until I saw a video where uh, Adrian on Bark and Jack talked about gray watches. And I think for me, if I ever was going to come down to like a tool watch, like something I wear every single day, it's going to be gray, you know? Um, okay. Because, you know, I, I don't know if anyone else has ever done this, but, you know, I retired from the military. I thought, oh man, I'm going to really dress up for work all the time, blah, 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 blah. And I went and got all these clothes. And I realized I was wasting my time for me personally. Like if, if that's what you like to do, then have at it. Right. But I was like, man, I'm really wasting my time trying to figure out what I'm wearing every day to work. So, (laughs) so when I, you know, I had a bunch of stuff going on, it's basically brought it down to a uniform. Like I got gray slacks, Mm, I got some black slacks, I got gray shirts and I got blue shirts and a couple of black ones. And then I keep it moving. Right. And like, even my socks, I've gotten them down to where, you know, it's gray, blue and black. And, and so now my watches are my little pop of color, but I feel like this is something I could wear every single day. Um, It's about Mars and exploration for, like we talked about earlier, like when I was a little kid, I always dreamed of being an astronaut and this thing, I mean, it just, so when I did my research on this watch, the bezel on the outside, uh, they did some estimates on, it takes 10 minutes for c- communications to get from earth to Mars. Oh, so the bezel dude. is set to where the way I read it, if you're not at Mars yet, but you're going to Mars, you might know that you're eight minutes away comms wise. So you can set your bezel to know when you should be receiving incoming communications from earth. Right. Got it. And then I guess if you're on Mars, if we ever get there on Mars, you just roll it to the 10 and you know, like we're going to get comms every 10 minutes. Right. And to me, this is mind blowing because the whole concept of a, of a GMT or a world time watch, right. Is out the window. We don't, we don't have time zones. Like you're so far out in space that uh, time zone doesn't matter. What matters is, is, is these large distances that you're covering and how long it takes communications to get from point a to point B, right? And how important that is because maybe you're having an, uh, an accident. I'm sure you've seen anyone that's ever seen a sci-fi movie. They, they see really good ones. Like they don't get to communicate right away. You right. know, they have to wait for stuff. In a, that's just, I think, a mind-blowing concept. Like we talk about if kids were watching the podcast, like little kids need to watch and learn about this watch because I think it would melt their brains for a second, but then they would understand just how big the universe they live in is and the galaxy sure. it is. So these right. little... Uh, lines over here are basically the rotation of mars there they display the mission control bezel the average lag time between mars and earth is 10 minutes so you can set that for it 
There's read more here. I'm not going to click it because it blows up and it kind of is funny things with the screen. They talk about the next giant leap and Mars and its moons. And then there's a cool little video of it. Like they did a good job with the videos, man. Like I watched this thing and I'm like, oh. It's a cool looking watch. Yeah, it's beautiful. Titanium sandblasted. They got the ground counter. And then the lines, they symbolize the orbit of Mars on its natural axis. So super luminova. I mean, come on, who doesn't love that? And uh, they talk about the, it's a proprietary hook class mechanism on the strap. If you're one of those strap people. But all in all, um, let's go back to the top so you can see. I mean, and the weird thing is I don't even really like chronographs, but I would wear this, be my one chronograph. I'd, I would buy it and wear it. Says the guy that's wearing a Seiko SNA. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It, uh, you know, for everybody else, it's like 40, it, yeah, it's 44 millimeters, 200 meters of water resistance, uh, 48 hour power reserve. So, you know, okay. I think that's plenty if you're going to wear it every single day. That's I mean, if price. this is some, the price is go to the top. Cause I think they put it up there. 39, 37, 37. Not bad. I mean, for everything they're yeah, giving us, nice. and it's, it's pretty unique. All right, cool. Yep. yep. Like not it. too bad. Nice. And then right. let's see my second one, man. Now, now the gold, I know not everybody's cool with, you know, two-tone, but for me, this would be like the watch, right? So if I was going to buy something, this would be, I would wear all the time. And again, it's a chronograph. I know I say I don't like them. It's got the GMT function. Uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful piece. And then we'll get to the spring drive movement. There's all the ins and outs. Wow. The movement. Okay. So I know there's a lot of back and forth in the spring drive and people talk about it. Well, it's basically a quartz movement, but I, I read it and they offer it on the website. Let me see if they got it here. The caliber specifications. Click on it. So th the way I read this and I understand it with my limited, you know, naval engineering background is that the spring drive movement has three parts, right? So you have the actual mainspring, right? And the mainspring is the engine. And what that does is it basically provides the power, sure. right? And then you have a quartz, they say quartz regulator, but they use the term rotor and stator in there. But basically that sets the speed limit for the watch, okay. right? And then, so that's part number two. And then part number three, you have an electromagnetic break, electromagnetic break, because the watch without that electromagnetic break could turn too fast and kill the power reserve. And you basically wouldn't get the use out of it you would need. It would just run all its energy out and go away, right? So those are the three parts for the spring drive. The quartz doesn't provide the power traditionally that it does in a regular quartz movement. It sets the speed limit for the watch. So mainspring power, quartz regulator, speed limit and electrical magnetics has to break cool. so it doesn't do it. And I think that, uh, cause I mean, the first time I heard about it, you know, Mark, Mark on Long Island talked about it. I mean, 72 hour power reserve, 43.8 mm. millimeter lug to lugs, 51.2. Thank you, Grand Seiko for putting the lug to lug in there. That's very nice of you. Yeah. Uh, it is pretty thick, 16.1 millimeters. Uh, but you know, at the end of the day, I mean, I think, I mean, if you look at it, it's, it's pretty, why wouldn't you want a, a big old dial to look at. I mean, so the only thing for me is the the colors, you know, the gold, I think the straight two-tone would have been a cool, but I understand having the black dial and the black bezel for contrast to be able to see, you know, if this is something you're really using every day, it's highly visible. I just think the, uh, the science behind that movement sure. is, I mean, you got a car, you actually have a car or something that moves forward that can move forward so fast that you need a system to stop it, you sure. know? So I think that might've been a problem that nobody needed solved that Grand Seiko solved. Like, you know, sometimes there's a, people create problems to solve them, but you know, it's like, it wasn't really a problem in the first place. You just came up with one. But <laughs> I, I think for me, it's uh, as they expand that movement and I get to learn more about it. I think that's something I would probably shoot for the moon for, for something. Because it is very, very pricey. You know, I'd have to have a lot of other stuff taken yeah. care of in my life before that. What is it, $18,600? Uh, this is what it yeah. shows right okay. there. Ooh, we. Yeah. Wow. Okay. It's nice. Cool. It's nice for damn show. Yep. And then my third oh. pick. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so we, we already talked about this. I don't, I don't need to go on and on about this. I mean, we, we had a whole podcast segment on it. Uh, but I go back to this watch all the time and I'm like, okay. 
Yeah. You know, $31,000. We're going to wear it every day. We talked about how they don't give you very much information on there, but it's a beautiful watch. Um, but here, here's my point. This watch to me ties back to the Fortis. And maybe so what this is, is it, what is it, Jason, for our listeners? Is oh, it's a, a, it is it is a Vacheron Constantine reference seven nine one zero Victor uh, slash zero zero Tango Tech B nine two two Overseas yeah. Dual Time Everest mm. the forty one millimeters Richards. yeah, yeah Corey mm. Richards uh, forty one millimeters titanium stainless steel all that stuff thirty one grand uh, but it's got a bunch of stuff in there and it's sold out so I mean can and it's sold it, out uh, yeah so we're kind mm. of uh, you know, I'll throw some pictures up there Ooh, of them etching. Oh my goodness! The the, you know. the mountains, right? Yeah, Mount Everest where he yeah. climbed. Yeah. So, wow. but for me, oh, dang! That's I'm a beautiful really, watch. That's I a know, beautiful I, watch. Yeah, we 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 definitely talked about it extensively. Obviously, we had uh nyc watch guy he actually owns it and he was telling us about the allocation and the relationship that you need to have with ad to get one. But that's that's yeah. a beautiful watch. I mean, so, so it's tied all together yeah, for me that and just bear with me if this is a little off the cuff, but so that Vacheron overseas Everest is, you know, to talk about exploration and doing stuff and, mm-hmm. you know, as, as a race where we can go, right. What we can do. And it's literally, you know, climbing a mountain, the mountain that was never climbed before. Right. Et cetera, et cetera. And I get that. The first watch we talked about is about going to Mars. Right. So I think that the Fortis is a natural, extension or conclusion, whatever, of this Vacheron Constantine overseas Everest. Right. Like the mountain shouldn't be good enough, right? Like we should be striving for more. And I feel like it's a, it's a, it's a nice reminder, but I think it's funny that the watch that's about climbing a mountain that's been climbed. I mean, not by me, but <laughs> climbed an awful lot is literally almost like three, a little bit more than three times the amount of the watch that is like no BS going to go hopefully further than any human has ever gone before. Yeah. You know, so I think that's just interesting, you know? Well, I mean, it it comes down to marketing. It comes down to brand equity. So Mm -hmm. when you look at the, the, the comparison between Fortis and Vacheron Constantin, I mean, VC is getting so much more attention and obviously everybody knows that they're above AP, above Patek. And in my opinion, I'm a wolf. You know, I mean, they're way above Fortis, but Fortis has done so much. I mean, space exploration mm-hmm. and all kinds of things. So, yeah, I definitely think Fortis is an underrated brand. And what they're giving us, I mean, what you just showed us is incredible that they've yeah. gone that far to do the research and the development of a watch that could potentially be worn on Mars and help you out with that. And, and it's interesting what you said, right? So you have a watch here that went to Everest. Okay but here's a watch that could potentially go to Mars, right? So yeah. it's, it's an interesting way of looking at it, you know, but it comes down to marketing, of course, because they're both made out of titanium, but obviously I know the finishing and the quality is going to be not in par. I mean, I, I think we all agree. BC is just going to knock the Fortis out of the park every day, you know, but yeah. because it tells so much more. I mean, obviously they employ uh, a, a lot of, uh, a lot of different methods in, in a different way and, and their employees are so much more dedicated because they probably get paid more money, right. To finish the watch and assemble it. So. Yes, sir. But P uh, all right. Let's, so let's go to Jason's collection. What is, what is, I mean, Yo, Jason, um, what, are you, uh, what are you thinking? I don't know, man. Look, with the Ford is, I'm a use astronomy space nerd and, and it Ford is just really, really speaks to me. But the Vacheron is like top notch. Um, I love the Grand Seiko too. I'm gonna go with the Fortis, man. Wow. I'm gonna go with okay. the Fortis. I'm okay. gonna go with the Fortis. All right. You know what I'm saying? Just, just because of, of, of what it stands for and what it means. Getting to Mars means so much today. So yeah, okay. I'll go with the Fortis. I'm gonna have to go with the VC. I mean, from the first time that I saw that that uh limited release, that GMT is just if I ever had the opportunity, that would be the one for me. However, honorable mention would be the, the Ford is for sure. I never seen that. And I think it's really cool. I mean, they put a lot of thought into everything that went into it. Right. But for me, it's just like the VC speaks to me in a completely different uh, way. The Grand Seiko for me, I think it's cool, but it does seem a little big. 
And I don't really like the two tone on the pushers. I think if they were stainless steel, they could have kept the mm -hmm. two tone on the dial. I think it would have been a little cleaner. But the fact that they put it on the pushers and the crown, it's it's a little crazy. And then the price, I'm like, yeah, yeah, definitely not. I mean, I'd rather go get a snowflake uh, for a lot less. Uh, yeah. Granted, that's not a chronograph. I get it, uh, but it does have a spring drive movement. So. Yeah, because Mark Mark from Long Island has a sp spring drive, but it's a blue and silver, and it's just right. It's like a you Pepsi, know, right? No, uh, no, no, no. It's like a it's 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 it looks similar to like the Great White Shark, I would say, but maybe okay. a little bit darker. There's 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 a there's I, I think the dial was designed. I don't know the reference number. I can't remember, but the dial is designed to be like our Earth atmosphere kind of going towards space, so it gets a little bit darker oh, as you go to the top. It. Yeah, That's it's cool. beautiful. Yeah, it's a beautiful yeah. watch.